All right, we're back at Nagoya Castle. Uh, we are about to enter the main castle and take a walk around and see what it looked like to live in, as a Japanese royalty. All right, let's do it. Bigger than it looks, or as my doctor, Doctor Who fans would say, it's bigger on the inside. These stones are no joke. Oh, here we go. As I, as I promised in the earlier video, the original dolphin. Uh, I don't know how I keep getting caught behind the tour groups. It's the worst thing about visiting places like this are damn tour groups. This is what those things on the roof look like at close. They call them dolphins, but he's got a vertical tail. I think he's a fish. Now let's get a trunk of folks. Uh, to our southern tour to going. Tour groups are going up the elevator, so we'll go upstairs. Let's see if we can beat them. So we just left basement floor one, and now we're entering the first floor. from 1940. You can see all the delicate woodwork. Mm -hmm. And that's what it looked like after the bombing. We got some little models here that show what the, the estates look like outside the castle. Uh, 
this is a model of the Honlury Palace. It's a one one twentieth scale. Over here, you can see a cross section of how it was all put together. Mm -hmm. Courtyard inside the buildings, and then over here we have a big diorama of all the palace grounds. And this is what it would have looked like in the 1860s. We we're looking towards the south. And the moat, the moat, there's still water in the moat. The moat still connects to the river, uh, but parts of the moat have been filled in. Uh, we will see part of the moat in a little while when we do the outside video. Mm -hmm. and here it is, a model of it without any skin, so you can really see how the structure was constructed. It looks, it looks, uh, when you look at it, you know, it looks like it's about five or six floors, but so many of the floors are in the base that uh, it's kind of deceiving. It's a lot, lot larger, as you can kind of see inside there, it goes down behind the brick behind the rock. In this mirror here, you can see what the ceiling would have looked like. Let's see if I can zoom in on the ceiling. Bounced off the mirrors. You see the lacquered wood beams and the painted ceiling panels. And the tatami mat floors. For you, if you guys don't know what tatami mat is, it's basically woven bamboo. It's a, it's a thin reed-sized bamboo that's woven into a mat, and it gives lots of cushion. Uh, a lot of places that train in martial arts, they have tatami mat floors. Um, so that uh, it's not just hard wood that you're practicing on. Uh, it gives a little warmth in the winter. It's a little insulating. Um, and it also, uh, it's just a little softer than walking around on, on hardwood. And in a place where you always will walk around without your shoes on, uh, that was a welcome, welcome respite from, from the toughness of the, of the floors. Mmm. Yeah, so I wasn't kidding when I told you they call them dolphins. Although they don't look like dolphins to me. With their vertical tail, they're more reminiscent of fish. Over here, we have some bladed weapons. Wakazashi, a dagger, a katana, a knife, As many of you guys know, the samurai 
deployed two bladed weapons, the longer sword, which is called the katana, and a shorter sword, which is called the wakugashi. These blades would have been crafted by generational masters, uh, with the process being handed down generation after generation. Uh, the Japanese katana was world renowned for its sharpness and staying staying sharp and, and not chipping. Its secret was that they would fold the metal dozens of times, fold it, hammer it flat, fold it, hammer it flat, fold it. And the repetitive, repetitive process of, of building up the strength in the steel uh, kept it sharp, kept it strong, kept it from snapping whenever you would strike a, another opponent's sword or armor with it. We always see in manga or anime people's swords breaking off while they're fighting, but I think that was a very, very rare occasion. All right. We got another floor. Let's continue on up. If this video starts to get a little long, I'll break it in half. But uh, we're only on the second floor. <laughs> so there's still lots more to see. and a tiger maybe they love their big cats then again he doesn't love cats yeah yeah nickel chan these are sliding glass doors or glass doors sliding uh shoji doors uh made from rice paper and wood and these panels are on the doors that would have uh, separated the different uh, waiting rooms as the lords would wait for the da the daimyos would wait for uh, their audience with the shogun. But these look to be original not uh, replications, so uh, these are probably very, very old. I gather that they probably would have taken these out of the palaces and hid them from the American bombers to keep them from being destroyed, as if these are works of art. You could hide these, but you couldn't hide the palace. more bladed weapons. These blades were probably carried for generations by family members handed down from father to son as they were chosen to serve the Shogun. This is more of a spear tip. It would have been on the end of a long halberd used for swinging and slicing. I've always had a deep fascination for samurai armor, the way it laces together, the pieces, the art, face masks, Look at that big brushy mustache. And you can see he's got the Nagoya dolphin in the front of his helmet. Unfortunately, all these placards are in Japanese, and the Japanese is just not there yet. Or else I try to read some more of these facts instead of just guessing or drawing on my previous knowledge of things. Ooh, look at the turtle. <laughs> How fierce is that? Okay, 
guy's got a big moth or a butterfly on the top of his helmet. And these guys would have vertical flags with the name or the the symbol of the regiment that they were serving with so that you could look out across the battlefield and you would know who to order to do what, where, with the horn blasts that they would all memorize. These helmets are really cool. Look at this one. This one's got a big man on the back. I wonder if it made him aerodynamic when he was riding his horse. Helped him to keep his head straight. <laughs> I've always wondered if it made their heads heavy, like if it messed with their balance or anything. Ooh, look at this. I like it. And then came the age of the firearms. Look at that thing, it must weigh a ton. Look at the size of that bullet. That would, that would do some damage. This thing looks like it was a, a mini cannon, probably mounted on something. It probably had a stand. A mini cannonball. This big old long rifle. Maybe for the sharpshooters on the tower walls. You can see the where the fuse would light the, the, the powder. Architectural renderings and, the, and the, the plans of the castle. This is how they were able to recreate it so authentically. And here are a bunch of the different houses' flags, different sigils. And you can see down there at the bottom their cloaks that would have their house sign on the back. Many different versions of the Rising Sun. And that is contrary to common common thought, that is not the Nazi swastika. That is backwards. It was long, long a Buddhist symbol before the Nazis stole it and used it for their own purposes. So you'll see that on many, many Buddhist shrines and temples here in Japan, um, it's not left over from the Germans. It's not Nazi, Nazi uh, inspired. Uh, in fact, it was the Nazis who were inspired by, by, by that symbol and they took it and made it their own, flipped it. It's, it's a mirror image of the Nazi swastika. Some more 
survey of the of the grounds. And I don't know if you can see all of the little writing in there, but that would have been what families had what plots inside Nagoya. Nagoya was probably about the size of this map with the castle in the center in the 1800s. It would not have been the size of the city that it is today, of course. All right, so we're at the end of floor two. I'm going to choose to stop here so that we can uh, go upstairs and start floor three. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am, and I'll see you on the next video.